So hello, I'm Andy Bennett, and I I spoke at Oshcamp last month on a project I'd spent a month doing. And so Jeremy said, why don't you come and do a lightning talk on that? And because I overran quite substantially my 40 minutes then, I didn't think I could compress it into 10 minutes. Um, and besides, I had another project that I did in September that my friend and colleague Simon Worthington managed to convince me that everyone would find it interesting. Um, I was a bit shy about it, but um, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Oh, you, you've only got me for 10 minutes, so if you don't like it, then that's, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, I started as a hobbyist computer programmer, and then I trained as an electronic engineer. So I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm a geek, I'm a, I make things, and um, this, is my, this is my very happy partner, Kate. And um, our relationship was going pretty well. And she'd occasionally show me rings that she liked. And, you know, as, a, as an engineer, I'd look at the rings and think about the rings. And then I'd, you know, we, we'd be walking along and I'd point out rings that I thought, I thought she might like and she didn't like any of them. So I realized that this wasn't going well. Um, so I decided to make my own. Um, and I'm going to show you a video of it first, which you've, which you've really already seen. So here, here it is. Um, and I just thought I'd talk about it a little bit. Um, so it it glows and it's made of um, epoxy, cast epoxy on the top. She likes emerald, so it's green. So made of cast epoxy on the top and kind of brass um, for the ring and around the edge at the bottom. And um, it's got an LED in it. So I, I made two sizes of the ring. Both were too small. Um, and then it's got the cast epoxy at the top and the supercapacitor, which makes means that it charges in the box. And when you take it out of the box, it lasts for about five or 10 minutes, just sits there glowing away. And um, the glowing is kind of a feature because it means it uses less power, which means it lasts longer. Um, and it's based on the AT Tiny, the AVR AT Tiny. So the AT Tiny 10 is one of AVR's new, very, very small micros. It comes comes in two incredibly small packages. I decided I was going to limit myself to packages which were less than two millimeters. Um, and so we made up a breadboard. I, I managed, managed to just about get it soldered to a breakout board and made up a, made up a little circuit to write the software for the, um, for the glowing. It's got six, so two power pins, four IO pins, which can be, I think they all can be ADCs or they can all be GPIOs. And it's got all the usual peripherals. It's, it's really, really capable. Micro, I recommend it's 30, 34p in single unit quantities. So yeah, check it out, it's great. It's a bit of a pain to program because it uses its own programming protocol. But if you've got a AVR Mark II, you should be, a, a ISP Mark II, you should be fine. Yeah, it's really good for this kind of like embedded oscillation thing where you want to do a few different things. So because it's powered from a supercapacitor, you, you don't really have a well-defined voltage and it's gonna, it's it's gonna be a real pain to actually get all the charge out of it. So the design I settled on was a kind of a charge pump design. So this this, we have a little um, PWM pulse width modulation running, and it and it pumps this capacitor, which causes this point to drop below ground. So we can, the the um, the LED needs about 1.8 volts to come on, and the capacitor I chose can go up to about 3.3 volts and the micro runs down to about one volt. And using that, the charge pump method, we can run run the capacitor with the LED still lit all the way down to about a volt. So that's quite good. And then we connect it to the other IO pin, which allows us to actually do the animation. And because of all the internal resistances in, in there, it, you don't need any external resistors or anything else. So that, it's just a very simple circuit. Um, I bought like, 20 different resistors, all surface mount, except for this one, which was recommended to me. And this was the only one that, like, this was the most efficient one. This was the brightest one. This was ran down to the lowest voltage. And so I had to cut it down so it fit in the thing. Um, so it's all, it's like not a very design for manufacturing, let's put it that way. Um, and I did a whole, I, I bought some epoxy resin, which you can cast. And so dyed that, did a load of prototype casting to work out what kind of shape that was going to work, how much space I had to play with. The answer is not much. Um, and there was loads of prototypes which went wrong. 
And in the end, I need a little bit more space at the bottom. So it sprouted an extra little brass ring that goes around the bottom of the epoxy as well, just to get me a little bit, get me about three millimeters of extra depth to fit everything in. Um, it's, this is just brass rod, square brass rod. And um, there's a guy called Mohit on Twitter who does these amazing, I check him out, he does these amazing brass rod sculptures. They're really, really impressive. And so he was talking about this technique where you, you draw it out on a piece of paper and you tape it all down and then you can solder it all together. So um, he does some much more better stuff, but I did some nice mitered, mitered joints to try and get myself a little square. Um, and then you solder it and it looks a mess, but that's fine because you can you file it down and then it ends up looking really nice. Um, I just use soft soldering for this. I, I didn't have the capability or the skill to do any 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 brazing. But if you if you braze it, you can get the color to match as well. Um, yeah, normally I solder about 250 degrees, which is if you've got a temperature control soldering iron, it's really good for um, circuits because I've not managed to blow anything up. But if you're doing brass rods, they're a bit thicker. It helps to have a bit more power. So I was soldering up about 350 degrees for that. And some of the enamel copper wire I was using for the circuit has a like the, the way you connect it is you melt it away with the iron and that needs about 400 degrees to melt that away. So I learned some new soldering techniques as well. Soldering, that's the micro just right in there. Um, soldering that was a real pain, um, or programming that. So to programming it, I, um, I connected all these external wires to it to try and connect it to the programmer. And I ordered 10 of them in two different packages from Farnell and they sent me 12 and I broke 11 of them over the course of about six hours because just as I was doing it, the leg would break, like I'd, I'd knock something and the leg would break off or like all the legs would just kept breaking off. Um, but it, yeah, I sat there from, from about midnight one evening to about 9 a.m. trying to solder this thing on a, on a weekend. And then here's the little prototype for the, for the LED embedded in the, in the epoxy. And that's, that's the whole circuit. There's the, the kind of sawn off LED and then the super capacitor and then the micro is just kind of set on the corner there and there's a little diode on that corner and the little enam enameled wires. And it still worked off. Like, I, I, while I was building it, I actually powered it up just to check it was working all the way along. Um, and then it went in the oven because I was really running out of time. The epoxy takes about 21 days to fully set. You can, it goes hard within about 24 hours, but if you bake it in the oven, you can get it to go hard in about 12 hours. So it baked in the oven for overnight. And um, I'd occasionally go in and check it was still working in case, because the epoxy shrinks a bit as you build it. So I hope none of my connections were being pulled off. So there it is in the oven, curing and on. Um, eventually it came out and I've got these two little spikes, which are the charging ports. So they get, um, they get machined down later, made it all nice and square, put the ring on. And then I was originally quite ambitious. There were, there were loads of features that got cut. So one of the things I wanted to do is wireless charging. So I designed a little wireless charger so it could charge on an Oyster card reader. Um, I got it to oscillate. I made a mess of my breadboard. Um, I eventually got enough gain. Well, I got more gain, but I didn't ever get enough gain. So it just charges with a little electrical contact in the box. So there's the box, the charger. The, I, I got some ring boxes off of eBay, modified them so that this board fits in the bottom. Um, USB port, charging over USB. And then a little tin foil that go, like when you slot the ring into the, in the box, there's a bit of tin foil in there, which gives you one um, contact. And then there's a little pin in the box that gives you the other contact. So yeah, there's the bottom of the box with the USB on the side. And then the, the pin, and the little gap and then that that kind of slots in on top and it's all nicely hidden and then you put it in the box and because it's running a micro it can have all sorts of things so when you first plug it in it sits there for 30 seconds charging itself up and then it starts to glow and then when you open the box hopefully it's glowing it works and there it is ready ready to go in my luggage because she my kate lives in new york i had my bcs 60th anniversary usb charger battery charger that they gave us um and yeah, it was, she said yes, so it's good. <laughs> um, I need to make, it slightly fits on her pinky finger, so she's very happy with it, yeah. I need to make a slightly bigger band for it.
Yeah, I have a little third hand with a magnifying glass on it. And I have a little bench light, which is incredibly bright, which helps a lot. And that also has a little magnifying glass on it. But mainly, you just stare at it until you can see it. <laughs> you get kind of the hang of where the pins are after a while and how the solder glows when it's molten on the right place. Thank you.